It has been used by indigenous persons, was featured prominently in the Battle of the Saints in the 18th century, and more recently served as a whaling station. The Pigeon Island National Landmark, as it is known, has a rich heritage characteristic of the cultural movements of international, civil, military, and maritime cross currents. General Charles takes us on location to a place that is fast becoming a popular sport. Pigeon Island is a national landmark and stands out as a historic site. It is fast becoming a popular recreational spot for visitors and residents alike. On location today, we'll explore what the island has to offer and aspects of its management. Good morning, welcome to Pigeon Island National Landmark. What's the cover charge? Residents pay 5 BC, non-residents pay 10. Uh, kids from the ages 5 to 12 pay a dollar each. Doesn't oh. matter whether they're non-resident or resident. And what can we find here? Well, there's a lot to see in here. Uh, this is a, a place to relax. Uh, we have a museum. We also have an old fort which you can walk up to. We have a lot of old ruins in the park where you could visit. Uh, there's a pub below the museum where you could also have a drink or something. We we'll have a heavy lunch there. You could get a light lunch, like you know, sandwiches or some stuff like that. If you like to relax, we have two sandy beaches in the park, uh, showers and restrooms at both beaches, which you could visit. That sounds exciting. We'll take a look. Okay. Following the completion of the Pigeon Island Causeway, which links the island to the mainland in 1973, government encouraged Rodney Bay Limited to lease the island to the National Trust. On February 23, 1979, the Pigeon Island National Park was officially opened, climaxing the island's independence celebration. The island displays the cultural monuments of international civil, military and maritime cross-currents characteristic of West Indian historical change. Pigeon Island was used by a number of different persons um, throughout the history of St. Lucia. The first ones of course were the Arawaks and Caribs. Um, the Arawaks were known to have had some kind of establishment up here um, and after that there's even the instance where the, the pirates were here with um, the famous Jean de Bois of Francois Leclerc around the 1500s, um, who actually pillaged a number of vessels out at sea. Um, there, was also the, there were also the French and British during the military times when you had the wars between them. And of course, it figures prominently in the Battle of the Saints. Um, then we have, of course, it being used as a naval air station um, around the Second World War when um, it was basically, they were known to have had seaplanes, a, sea, a seaplane base up here, and it was linked to the base that they established at Rodney Bay. Um, we also had its use as a whaling station, um, because St. Lucia had whaling at one point in time until um, the whaling act, the non-whaling act came into being, at which St. Lucia signed. Um, there was Josette, who was an actress, Josette Lee, who leased the island from the government, and she had her parties, and her, it was, it was a, a, a big yachting place. Um, so Pigeon Island had a, a number of uses and very, very interesting and sophisticated uses and, and at some point in time. The first piece of ruin visitors to the park see on entering is what used to be a five-room structure called the Officer's Kitchen, which was built in the late 18th century, a major fortification period for the British. The kitchen was later rebuilt after being destroyed by a major hurricane. The tree, as I'm looking at, has grown into the wall and if you, could, if you just look on a little bit on the right you can see the wall actually engulfed by the tree and that's one of the problems that, that we face at Pigeon Island with the ruins because you have vegetation growing in them. The lime that users used to build them is very nutritious for the trees and they cling to that, that lime and end up destroying the, some of the buildings. So this is one of the um, critical problems that we face at Pigeon Island right now for the ruins. Another signature piece of the colonial period and a more dominant piece of ruin at Pigeon Island is the officer's barracks, which was built in 1808. Like some of the other ruins at the park, the barracks is in dire need of restoration. Um, when Pigeon Island was given to the trust in 1975, what we found was that it had been, it had been plundered by people who wanted to build houses and so on. They came here and they took the main parts of the buildings and went away with them. You know, so we were, we were left with um, relics, you know, little, really not the best 
um, structures and we try to we try to work with what we have. In spite of its fragility, the officers' barracks for the past eight years has served as the backdrop for St. Lucia's premier musical event, the St. Lucia Jazz Festival. <laughs> One thing that we always try to do uh, is during the jazz festival, cordon off the area because as you can see, the buildings, the mortar in the buildings, it's, it's breaking down very easily and stones can fall at any point in time. And so we always ask people who are there for jazz not to come into this building. I'll try to control, um, not to sit on the walls because we never can tell what could happen. And so we are appealing to persons for whatever um, festival we have here, that these buildings um, are very, very fragile and we would like them to at least observe the kinds of um, things we put in place to protect them. The Pigeon Island Interpretation Center takes you through time from the first volcanic eruption to present day. This interpretation center has been established in one of the restored buildings with artifacts recovered from Pigeon Island and elsewhere. It generally gives um, history about what happened during the 18th century on Pigeon Island. Here you could find um, the history of the Battle of Saints, which was fought between the, 12th, the 8th to the 12th of April 1782 with French, with the French and the British. This is a Pigeon Island shop and we provide um, a lot of Pigeon Island items like souvenirs, a lot of um, local items in fact we provide scented candles um, t-shirts with Pigeon Island written on them and uh, sunglasses and uh, quite a few things well we're on our way to the, the one of the summits of Pigeon Island which is um, where Fort Rodney is located this is one of the places that Pigeon Island is famous for one of the names that Pigeon Island is famous for Fort Rodney uh, Rodney was one of the admirals, British admirals, who really fe featured very prominently um, in the Battle of the Saints. And um, you could see that that was the battle that destroyed the French fleet for a very long time. So it was very critical, it was very important to the British. So he was um, made famous um, because of that. So we are at the top of Pigeon Island and um, one of the more famous looking points is certainly a breathtaking view. What do you think? Well, it's, I, I mean, it's fantastic. I always like to come up here and just relax and, you know, it's very serene and it's away from everybody and the view, as you say, is spectacular. So, yeah, I think anybody should come up here and relax. Yeah, I'm glad we made that, that trip up. Yeah. A little tasking on the legs, <laughs> the legs but it was, it was good. It's so worth it when you get up here, definitely. What do you think of Pigeon Island? Oh, I think it's very interesting. I like the history of the island. Um, it's very pretty. It's got some beautiful views up here. Um, and you get to meet some nice camera crews as well. <laughs> Weren't you scared staying out at the point there? <laughs> no, not really, because the rocks break down either side. But uh, don't tell my wife I was out there, will you? <laughs> she won't be too pleased to know the children She'll were there. <laughs> She'll have kittens, yeah. No. I think it's quite nice. and I can see the whole bay and I can see my hotel and all the boats and everything, really. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the whole world, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about Well, it? I think it's quite nice for the views we have out here. Um, what else? <laughs> what about your experience standing out at the park? Well, I don't think it's that scary, actually. It's actually quite nice. Okay, pretty brave, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> After that long trek up to the fort, the captain's cellar is our next stop, a fitting place to quench our thirst. Cheers, Minita. For others, the beach might be a better alternative to rejuvenate after climbing Fort Rodney. It is also a place to laze around for the rest of the day. Unsport beauty. Yeah. It's very, very nice. Hard work in warm weather like this, but worth it. I think all the um, trees and everything, it's nice to know that they're all named so you can, you know, look up and see what they're called. Every visitor who comes to St. Lucia should at least see Pigeon Island and learn about it 
um, as the educational component of, of their visit. Um, so we're appealing to the hotel sector to put our brochures out there and let people know, um, people who come here, the stable visitors know about, about Pigeon Island and come and learn about it, come and experience it because it is a unique experience. Apart from its outstanding beauty, the 40-acre sprawl is an ideal place for nuptials and is fast becoming a popular place to tie the knot. Pigeon Island is open year-round. Take the opportunity to sample its beauty and get to learn about the island's rich heritage. Share the experience. Bring the family. Maybe next time we might just catch you on location.